Hello, everybody. This presentation is going to hopefully give you a little bit of an idea as far as what welders have for parts and how they contribute to your welding process. In a nutshell, and this is going to be a very basic uh, explanation, we're not going to go into a great length of detail. However, uh, this particular set of slides will hopefully show you how a voltage is produced and how current flows. That is essentially when you see that arc at the tip coming off a rod or off the end of your gun, that's current flowing, fusing your metal parts together. So, welder parts identification is what we're going to be completing on this next set of slides. So let's get to it. All right, what we have here is we have a little Lincoln MIG welder. MIG, of course, stands for metal inert gas. That's an acronym for that. And the proper term, actually, for these type of welders is called GMAW, G-M-A-W, and that stands for gas metal arc welding. Now, the gas metal arc welders are very popular because you can use them on very thin material. They're very easy to use. Couple of tips. From personal experience, I can tell you, you need to have a clean ground. If you don't have a clean ground, you're going to have problems. Your welder needs to be cleaned, and you need to make sure you have your settings correct. If you don't have the correct settings, you're either going to build up too much, you're not going to penetrate, or you're going to penetrate too much, or you'll find that it's jumping all the time. So setting on these things is very important. But let's get down to how they work. Well, clearly, we plug this thing in. So we're going to start with where do we plug this thing in? Well, you can see right here that this is the power cord that you would plug into a circuit of 120 volts. Now, I believe it's important to try and make sure you have a dedicated circuit of at least 15 amps, preferably a 20 amp circuit to plug your welder into. If you're sharing it with other receptacles, there is a chance that if any loads happen to be on those other receptacles that you will blow a breaker or a fuse when you start welding because it will overload the circuit. So just remember that, that a dedicated circuit is always a good idea. Okay, so we're going to carry on with just looking at basic parts of the welder. I'm sure when you look at this particular slide, you're probably thinking to yourself, man, there's a lot going on there. And at the end of the day, there is, but when we break it down into its individual parts, I'm sure you'll find it's really not that bad. So we're going to start with what happens when we plug it in. Well, the very first thing that happens is we're going to power up a transformer, okay? And that transformer is right here. That's our main transformer. You can see it. And that transformer has several taps on it. Now, again, you don't need to really know the specifics around that, but the idea is, is that the tap transformer is what gives us the ability to adjust our voltage on the front, which we'll show you here in a bit. So when we're adjusting our voltage from low to high, it's this transformer that's actually giving us that ability. Now, at this point, this is an AC current that's flowing. So we're just going to go and take a look here. This is what we, when we say AC, that's what this is right here. Okay, that's our 120 volts AC coming in. Now what we're going to do is we have to send it to what's called the rectifier, which is going to give us a waveform that looks like that. And so the device that does that, there's two devices on here. First of all, we have to rectify it. Now the rectifier is right here. Now you're probably looking at that thinking, well, it just looks like a plate of steel. In essence, it's a plate of aluminum, and it's actually a heat sink, and there's two of them. There's one there, and if you look real close, there's one there. On these heat sinks are diodes. They're called stud-mounted diodes. They're right here. You can see the, these are the anodes in this particular case. Again, you don't need to know what anodes are. But the idea of this rectifier is it takes the AC and it converts it to rectified DC. There's four diodes that help us with that. And like I said, when it does that, this is right here what you get for an output. Now, you have to remember, current is flowing through your welder, and it goes off the tip of your rod or wire, and that's what fuses your metal. When you have a waveform like the rectified DC we're looking at here, it is DC because it never falls below the reference line, which is over here. Okay, So it never goes below 
this reference line right here. So that's how we know it's DC, direct current and not alternating current. However, it's not really clean. So what we have to do now is we want to filter it. When you guys have your car or your truck and the battery dies and you charge it back up, if you were to put what's called an oscilloscope or simply look at that waveform, this is what you would see, a nice straight line. That's a DC battery voltage. There's two ways of getting that. You can use, of course, a battery, or you can take AC and you can filter it so that we get that. So let's look at what parts of this welder help us with the filter. So here again we have, I'm just going to back up a little bit here, and we're going to take a look at, uh, I just want to write in here rectifier so you guys can remember what we're looking at here. And so this is our rectifier right here. Okay, so there's our bridge rectifier converting AC to DC. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this guy right here. You're probably thinking to yourself, well, that looks like a transformer. And in a matter of speaking, it is. I mean, it's called an inductor coil. A coil is a coil, whether it's a transformer uh, or or not, I mean, at the end of the day, it's built the same way, but it's called an inductor coil, and it's a filter. It's one of the two parts of the filtering system, and this helps filter our AC to DC, and this is called an inductor coil. Okay? That's the first part. The second part, we want to go down here and we want to take a look at these big red guys. Now, some of you may be familiar with this. If you're into car audio, you've probably seen these. These are capacitors, and they're rather large. That's the second part of our filtering system on this particular one. Whoops. guess I'm having a hard time spelling. Let's back up the tree in here. So this is our capacitor. And that's also part of the filter. Once it's filtered, then again, we go back to this other slide, we now have this nice looking, straight, clean, DC filtered waveform, and that's what comes out the end of your gun, is or, or the end of your rod, depending on what kind of unit you're using. So let's look at the front of this thing and see if we can analyze a little bit what some of these uh, symbols mean. And we're going to start with, right over here, we're going to start with some of the labeling up here. So the question is, what does that mean? Well, that simply means single phase. That's what the little wiggly line is. And then right here, that indicates that we then rectify it and filter it, and we end up with DC. Okay, so we start with AC. Uh, single phase, which means we're using one phase and one neutral, it goes through a rectifier, it gets filtered nice and clean, comes out DC. These two uh, uh, symbols are very important, that's underwriter laboratory, that's necessary in order to operate any piece of equipment in Canada, and this here is also very important, that's the Canadian Standards Association, also necessary in order to operate any piece of equipment in Canada. So. That brings us to this part right here. That simply means that we're going to plug into single phase, period. In North America, of course, we have our system is called NTSC, and we operate on 60 cycles per second or 60 hertz. And this particular set here is telling us that the current can go upwards of 20 amps or 15 amps. And the voltage, the nominal voltage is 115. That's what that's saying. Now, if we go down a little further, it's saying once it's been rectified and filtered, that's the symbol for DC, our current now can be 88 amps. That's I, I of 2 simply means current. And that's at 18 volts of electrical pressure, or 18 volts. Of course, that's the voltage symbol there. If we go up to 20 volts, then we only require 62 amps to, uh, to actually operate that welder. Now you will notice in both cases we have a 20% sign here. That simply means this welder has a duty cycle 
up 20%. Now you might ask yourself, what does that mean? It simply means in a six minute time frame, we can use that welder for 20% of six minutes, which is basically 1.8 minutes before we have to let the welder cool. If you, if you use it for more than 1.8 minutes continuously, this welder is going to heat up and there's a little tripping mechanism inside that's going to start to limit your current. And that's usually when you'll notice your weld will all of, all of a sudden not be fluid. It'll start to build up on you, spit a little bit. There's various things that will indicate that you've been welding for too, too long. You need to let it cool a little bit. And lastly, the actual uh, control uh, knob. So first of all, when we look at this guy right here, um, you'll notice that this is our simply our on-off button. So when you want to turn it on, you're going to operate that. This guy right here, this is our speed. Okay, this controls how fast our wire is ejected from the gun. And that's an important setting because if you're going too fast, often you'll build up. If you're not going fast enough, you will burn through. Okay? The next knob is this guy here. This is the voltage adjust. Okay, you'll notice on here that there is uh, four settings. And this is where you'd have to check your, the book depending on the type of welder you have. If it doesn't actually tell you on the front, uh, high, low, medium, etc. Our assumption here is that we could go A as low and B as high. Uh, again, you'd have to check your book to uh, to be double sure. But your voltage adjust is important because if you're building up, that means you're not penetrating enough, which usually means you don't have your voltage adjust set correctly. And lastly, we're, we'll look at uh, specifically what the actual uh, title of this welder is. It says Weld Pack 100. Now this isn't always the case, but most manufacturers will give you an indication of the no or the maximum current for a, uh, a short period of time that the welder can actually uh, draw or produce. And this of course would indicate that this for a fraction of a second could actually draw 100 amps DC. Now understand that that's after it's been transformed and, and we're dealing with a certain voltage. So clearly uh, we would have to be dealing with uh, a voltage that's enough to push that much current through. It's not super important, but when you are purchasing a welder, if you're going to be doing heavier type welding, then you may want a 250 model. You might want the weld pack 250. Again, check with your manufacturer to make sure that that's what that number actually means. In my experience, more often than not, that's a pretty good indicator of what kind of current you can expect maximum from that welder. So now let's take a look at the other side and there's several important components. Obviously, I would say this is where your reel goes, uh, right here. And there's two types of wires that you can buy on the reel, solid and flux core. And the solid wire requires some sort of shielding gas. Uh, blue shield is the most common, that helps uh, get rid of the oxygen in the area of your weld when you start welding. So this guy is where you put your reel. The second part, of course, and this is very important, is over here. Now, you will notice that we have two wing nuts. And there's a positive, and you can't really see it, but underneath here is negative. And this is what it's necessary for you to actually determine whether you're using solid wire or flux core, because that will affect what polarity you use. Polarity meaning that your ground either has a positive polarity or it has a negative polarity. Now in this case, the wing nut is done up to the negative side, which indicates your ground is negative. That would mean it's set up for solid wire. So this guy here is for solid wire. And that means if we were going to use flux core wire, which is usually used outside where you may, might have wind, uh, you know, rendering any kind of blue shield gas ineffective. But then you'd have to actually undo this, this wing nut on the negative side and hook it up to positive and install on your real flux core. So this is flux core. The best advice I can give most new, new welders is 
take a look on the inside of the uh, cover of your welder. It will tell you which polarity you need for what kind of wire you are using. At the end of the day, my hope is that this helped you out a little bit with understanding a basic MEG or GMA welder. And remember to always weld safe and safety first.